So, if you were to play a compilation of the sounds of the 80s, one of the voices you would hear is our next guest. I'd like to hear a compilation of the sounds of the 80s. I Be think fun. we're about to in just a moment. Good. Think of the look of love. Shoot that poison arrow. Among the six top ten hits for ABC, Martin Fry, lead singer, is setting off on tour again. This time he'll have a full orchestra in tow. Have a listen to some of those songs. <laughs> so Martin Fry has just been saying to us, it's always tricky seeing your whole life flash by. I'm sorry if we did that to you. Was that a bit traumatic or was it all right? Morning. Um, yeah, that is my younger self. Yes, from way back when, from the 1980s. Yes. And what's it like watching that back? Um, I look at it with pride, yeah. I think things were very shiny back in the 1980s. Weren't I, I they? Know, I had a gold suit on back then, yeah. Mm. Did you I think it was a cry own... for help, though, from my generation. I think God. everybody wanted attention, you know, all those guys in Duran Duran and Depeche Mode and ABC. It was all about attention. Did you try to kind of outshine, um, literally, with the clothes, like, your contemporaries? Absolutely, you know, it was really... I mean, you know, when you're in a band, uh, only one act can get to number one, so... You know, anyone that tells you it wasn't competitive is lying. And was there a correlation? Was there a correlation between the shininess of the out shininess of the outfit and the success? I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say so. That's a very good point. I think so. When you look at Boy George and Annie Lennox and uh, our good selves, yeah, you could always uh, nudge yourself up the charts a bit higher with a shiny. If you were more shiny than the yeah, other guys, so it's a magpie theory. Yeah. Yeah. Martin, if you were, so, if you were to sort of class classify each of those bands, those are really well-known bands of that era, which a lot of people remember really well. Yeah. In terms of their look and what they kind of... So your look was what? You, you were very dapper. I mean, you, it was glittery and dapper, and as you are, yes, indeed, very much now. this Thank morning. Very so how would you... Like, Duran Duran, by comparison, were what? What were they? Uh, they were the boys from Birmingham, weren't they? They yeah. were kind of in Sri Lanka shooting their videos. We were in Shepherd's Bush shooting ours. But we were kind of... Um, we were pretty... I mean, I had the gold suit, yeah. It was, it, yeah. Was, it was a mod thing, I think, yeah. And then it kind of got turned up a couple of notches, yeah. I think we were pretty cosmopolitan sound. And we were always obsessed with kind of trying to fuse two worlds. Uh, we'd listen to Joy Division and The Cure, and then we'd listen to uh, go to clubs and listen to Earth, Wind & Fire and Chic. So it was very much a kind of combination of different musical sources. And, and, and in the Martin uh, Fry yeah. wardrobe at home, does that suit exist? Uh, that suit got stolen. Uh, once. No. What? It was in Coventry. You know, like in Tom and Jerry, where they leave an apple pie on the shelf. I left my suit at my open window and I came back to do the show and it had gone. And I was always a bit disappointed. This is 82 when this happened. I was a bit disappointed that um, the police hadn't found a guy in a gold lame suit, you know, wandering around Coventry. <laughs> I but, reckon. He must um, never have been worn because it would have been immediately. I do have some others that uh, are my pension, yeah, when they get auctioned off. I reckon know. someone yeah. has that suit. Yeah. And, yeah. and could be watching because you wouldn't throw that away. No, absolutely not. And if you go to Sotheby's now, you can. You can get a good price on those suits. Do you want to put it? Always on? look after your suits. Yeah, absolutely. Always do you want to put it on record now that if someone I do have other there... suits, I should uh, say. Well, okay. Clearly, you do. It, would you want to put on record now that if someone knew something about the whereabouts of that suit, it would be an amnesty? You know, just to have it back in your possession. I'll be honest. I'm over it. I'm over oh. it now. It's a few decades. <laughs> good point. I've gone by. You, I'm you, happy. You, I'm happy with where I'm at now. Good. But yeah, they're well. Much better position yeah. to be. Let's and devalued about that. it straight away now. Yeah, so they yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Well done. Good on. Good on you. So there is. Yeah. Um. So now. This tour, yeah, with an orchestra. Yeah, um, the years have rolled by. The Lex Gonna Love Our First album is now four decades old. For 40 years has gone by, believe it or not. So we figured, we have been playing a lot of shows over the last 10 years with orchestra, with the band, uh, with Anne Dudley conducting, and with me cavorting down at the front there. But um, it felt right to kind of take the tour around the UK in June uh, to celebrate 40 years, yeah. How's the uh, the distinctive voice shaping up these days? Um, I'm very I'm, I'm f very fortunate, and, and it's a great honour and a privilege to climb on stage. But it is nice to be able to sing. Yeah, I don't know. I think it kind of uh, it develops over the years. Yeah, you grow into your voice. I think until that point when it just disappears altogether. So in the mean, you know, I do enjoy singing. Yeah, mm. I mean. Singing is such a therapeutic thing, you know, it's not really a job being a singer. It's a kind of, uh, it's a, just a, a nice feeling when you sing, Do you know, especially my, to an audience. My favourite uh, ABC song, forgive me if I get the title wrong, When Smokey Sings. That's correct, yes. Lovely song. 
Thank you very much. That's I don't our... think it gets the attention it deserves. That's our tribute to Motown, uh, growing up listening to Atlantic and Stax and Soul uh, music. Uh, when Smokey Sings is all about uh, Smokey Robinson, yeah. But the beautiful thing was, uh, we brought the record out and we went to Holland to do the show, a TV show, Top Pop. Uh, walked down the corridor, there's the ABC dressing room and there's Smokey Robinson's dressing room. So I, uh, I knocked on the door and I said, hello, Mr. Robinson, uh, here's my seven inch vinyl, you know, uh, When Smokey Sings. So that was, it kind of, Felt really nice, you know, um, to meet your heroes. You finish, know. finish the tale. Did he, he didn't slam the door in your face and he, uh, say... Who, uh, he did look at me a little quizzically, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but about four weeks later, I met him again in uh, Los Angeles. And by then, both his record and our record, When Smokey Sings, were big hits, you know. So, uh, you know, he beckoned me over and we, we palled up, yeah. Oh, and nice. he sent me a letter. This is how classy Smokey Robinson is. He sent me a handwritten letter saying, thank you so much for you know, this beautiful song you've written about me and Motown and everything. And at the bottom, it just had the uh, Tamla Motown, MD, William S. Robinson. You know, he was the boss of the company as well. That's so cool. That is just is that cool? very, oh. yeah, very... No, no, is, that, that is, is that like really your coolest... Be careful what you write songs about, because it comes true, you see. Is that yeah. kind of like your coolest celeb meeting? Um, hero meeting? I'm not going to name drop. Name drop stuff, am I? You know. Well, what about one tale? Andy Warhol once. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's a huge name drop. But um, he came to a show once, yeah. Well, I have to say, back in the 80s, you know, the bands I mentioned earlier, like Depeche and Duran Duran, Spandau Ballet, Soft Cell, I suppose, Human League, all those bands, it was very experimental. So it was kind of very art-based. So when we played New York, yeah, Andy Warhol came down to check it all out. When you said, so you, you were told... I, did not, I, I vowed not to drop a name. I, I, I don't know. know. Yeah, we're yeah. we're, we're, we're knee deep in this, this now. So, so you get told while you're performing, Mr Warhol's in the crowd. Did he come and see you afterwards? What, what's uh, just uh, Pat Hackett, his biographer, and he came back and said hello, yeah, and then invited us down to the factory, yeah. But um, sadly, I had no money in my pockets to buy any of the artwork that he had. You know, he was just sitting in his office signing stuff, talking about music, yeah. But he was very complimentary about this whole wave of British bands, yeah, he liked it. And the whole idea of uh, MTV, just as it was forming, you know, films and stuff, yeah. Anyway. You've got this. I shouldn't have done that. No, no, no you absolutely like should have done I'm just here it. to plug my tour. Yeah, yeah well, we'll yes. say it now. We'll with the orchestra, uh, with you all the way. So, it, and it, I'm sure it works brilliantly because the music would work like that. I can absolutely picture it. Uh, yeah, w w Anne Dudley's an incredible conductor, brilliant musician, and, uh, she played on the Lexicon of Love all those years ago, so it's great to reunite. So she knows the essence so of it. We have to get it. Yeah, we get it right, and we're looking forward to a spectacular show. Lovely having you here this morning. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Martin. Thanks, guys. Um, ABC's tour, The Lexicon of Love, runs from the 17th to the 30th of June.